What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Fall Damage Central podcast. I'm the Mighty Bildo. And with me each and every week, I got Old School Legend Gaming. What's up, Old School? What up, what up? Man, what's been going on with you this week? Not much, man. Just on that work grind, you know, trying to trying to get them doubloons to pay them bills. The got a got some uh got some decent gaming time in i downloaded that uh lies of p on game pass i played a little bit of that that game is freaking awesome i um probably i'd say in my opinion that's probably one of the best like souls clones i've played so i i look forward to diving deeper into that but that's got to go on the back burner for a little bit because i am getting back into cyberpunk i got oh. phantom liberty pre-ordered I uh, I'm playing the campaign again. I just downloaded the update today. I'm excited to jump back into Liberty City, man. So, you know, that's that's what's going on on my end. Is it <clears throat> is it really called Liberty City? Night I think City. it is Night City. Is it right? Li- Night City, Liberty City, or Night City? It's one of them. I think it's Night City. <clears throat> Meg, you're, you're getting your uh, Grand Theft Auto in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Night City. Um, yeah, you are right. Night City. It is. Um, I haven't played any games this week, man. Um, we talked a few weeks ago about the fall being our favorite season and October coming up and everything, and I'm super stoked for it, but my sinuses seem to hate this time of year because every year, like clockwork, um, you know, I, I keep my box of tissues next to me because it's like somebody turns a faucet on and my sciences get all congested and stuff and it's not fun damn gotta get on that allegra d uh, yeah i know i got claritin down there i got dayquil i got a whole bunch of things that, uh nothing seems to work but i'm getting through it um so that cyberpunk dlc is 2.0 right like correct update 2.0 yeah. What, so the, what uh, the, the DLC. Changes? So the the DLC hasn't launched yet. So it's just the the two point update, which is yep. pretty much prepping you for the DLC. Um, so the changes that they've made, man. There's if you guys go to the uh, CD Project Web uh, CD Project Red website and check out the updates that they have for Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven. I mean, they're they put a lot, a lot, a lot of work into the updates and just to, you know, just a brief description. So uh, the AI changed quite a bit. So now the police officers are really aggressive. If you commit a crime, the police officers are chasing you down. They're, uh, they're coming after you, man. Previously, it wasn't like that. It was, you commit a crime and, you know, you can just chill for a little bit and you're fine now nah man they're hunting you down um perks have been uh rescaled so they recommend you start a new game but if you pick up with a a previously saved game uh it's going to reset all your perks but you get all those points you get refunded so if you're like a level 40 or something like that you're not going to have any perks assigned to you but you are going to have those points so you could go ahead and like allot them how you want um the armor got changed up a bit I think it's part of like your uh, your cyberware. So that's like the uh, the cyberware is like the uh, the attachments that you can connect to your body. So they have like an ocular attachment, like arm attachment, like legs. Um yeah, I mean it it's just a ton of stuff, man. I got to play it for a little bit and uh from like the 20 minutes that I played, I mean I it was great. Nice. I- this sounds like a good spot for me to jump back into because I, I started the game again when I got the PS5 version of the game and I didn't get too far in it again. Um, but I want to. Like, it's a cool world they built there. Um, I just, I, for some reason, I just never went back to it once I started it. Yeah. So the game doesn't really open up until probably like a couple of hours in. Well, it, it, it really depends. Like, there's like one big mission that you do at the beginning. And uh, depending on how long it takes you to to get that done, once you finish that mission, then that's when everything like starts opening up. You start getting more side quests and, you know, getting better armor, better gear and everything. 
Yeah. So if anybody is interested in first trying it out, um, just j- try to play for it for like the first couple of hours. Um, get through that first mission, and it's not even a bad mission, man. It's pretty fun. It's pretty wild the the, the shit that happens. But I I think Cyberpunk is an excellent game, man. I know when it first came out, it was awful with the bugs and the glitches and stuff. Mm-hmm. They got all that stuff fixed up now, man. And the story itself is just fantastic. How do you think? How long do you think it takes you to uh, beat the game, like story missions and stuff? Um, I mean, story missions, you could probably burn through it, and I'd say probably about 30 hours if you're just doing just straight main missions. Okay. I'd, I'd, say, I'd say about a solid 30 hours, maybe a little bit more. Um, yeah, the furthest I've ever gotten in that game is when... Uh, be be believe... careful. Be careful. Don't, don't, give out, don't give out any spoilers. So... <laughs> Ah, uh, you're right. But when, uh, yeah. So, right. so you, so you, you know what I'm talking about, right? Like the, the big like first mission and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So d- did you make it like past that? Uh I believe so. When okay. somebody dies. Yep. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I'm past it. I I have gotten past that before. Yeah. Um, I got it. Yeah, I got to get back into it. Um, but man, also come out like something that came out today. WWE released like you're you're telling me sixteen people, sixteen people. I I, I think it might be more. I'm just looking at this list now, and it's got two, four, six, two. Yeah, sixteen. So I I, I think there might be about. Maybe like 18, 19 total. Yeah. What, where are you looking at that list from? I am looking on MSN Sports. Ooh. Okay. So a lot of these releases, um, you know, the, these these weren't like really big stars. Uh, only a few of them have been on TV fairly regularly in the past few weeks. But the majority of them we haven't seen on TV for quite some time at this point. So, you know, it, it kind of makes sense to let them go. I mean, I never like I never want to see anybody lose their job. I never want to see anybody lose their livelihood. You know what I mean? But when you look at the people's when you look at the people who got released, you're kind of like, oh, OK, they weren't really doing much with them. So at least now at this point, you know, they have options. They could get to AEW. They can go to the TNA, NWA major league wrestling is starting to pick up really big too. So there's stuff that they could do out there. That's where they're going to be able to utilize their talent and get paid. Yeah. I I was really surprised to see that they let Dolph Ziggler go. He's been there for a while now. Uh, 20 years, 20 years. I didn't know it was that long. Holy crap. Dang. Um, Benjamin. So it might actually he might actually have been longer because uh so back in the day when he first started there was this cheerleading group called the spirit squad i remember and he them. was one of the, yep. he was he, uh he was a nikki in the spirit squad and then after they disbanded they were doing a lot of work with degeneration x well like the the weird degeneration x where it was like the older version of Shawn michaels and triple h where they were just kind of trying to be funny but they really weren't yeah um they finished that up and then all of a sudden like a couple months later he came back as dolph Ziggler and uh you know the rest is history but yeah he he's been there for quite some time man and th- i mean they just weren't really doing anything with him he's you know super talented guy man um if you looked on twitter you know everybody just saying like the best of things about him how he was like such a good worker in the ring and good person all this other stuff so I, I think that guy's going to bounce back. And I mean, I, he, he might not even want to wrestle anymore because I know he does. Uh, he has a side gig where he does stand up comedy and he really oh. seems to be enjoying doing that. And he, he's actually done interviews before, um, probably within the year. And he spoke about how he doesn't even watch the product anymore. So he's employed by WWE. Well, he was employed by WWE and he wasn't even watching like WWE programming. He wasn't watching AEW. He wasn't watching wrestling at all. So there's a very good possibility that he doesn't even go back to wrestling. He just sticks with his comedy stick. Yeah. Probably a lot easier on his body too, at his age. Yeah, definitely. 
after 20 years of taking bumps. Um, somebody I'm not surprised that got let go. Top dollar right here. Yeah, man. I was actually a little sad about that because I, really? uh, I'm a big hit. Yeah, I'm a big hit row fan. Um, remember, we're, we were at that SmackDown when they when they first came back. Um, that was at that live uh, that live SmackDown we had gone to, and uh, Hit Row came back. That was uh, under Triple H. So pretty excited to see them because I've always been a big Hit Row fan. But unfortunately for Top Dollar, there was uh, an incident on SmackDown probably about a year ago now. And I mean, if you haven't seen it, I mean, you could just go on YouTube. You could check Twitter and he tried to do this dive over the ropes and yeah. he, he like halfway through, he like buckled his knee. He couldn't make the jump and he like kind of tumbled <laughs> over yeah. the rope. I mean, yeah. man, I, I hate to laugh, man, but that shit is hilarious. Like yeah. if you watch the clip, man, but ever since then, it's just, it, it wasn't good for him. I mean, he was just constantly getting clowned by Michael Cole. Um, anytime, like I remember they had a battle royale and he was one of the, one of the contestants and Michael Cole was like, Oh, I bet top dollar is going to win. Cause he can't go over the top rope. Oh, um, oh I remember it, that. <laughs> <laughs> it's just all these digs, man. And, uh, you know, unfortunately that's just, he, he went from, they went from like, kind of like a hot act to to pretty much nothing you know they started they became the guys whose entrance like you would never see on tv they would uh yeah. you know somebody would come out to wrestle them and they'd already be in the ring so Jobber that status. that wasn't that wasn't surprising to me but I, i'm a little upset about it because yeah i i am a big top dollar fan some some of these like i'm, I'm a little disappointed with too man so like uh shelton benjamin mm -hmm. that's another guy who i think is super duper duper underrated um i've always liked shelton benjamin mm -hmm. also so Pretty sad to see him go. Uh, don't know what he's going to do now because he's, you know, he's getting up there in age as well. So I just don't think his his stock is as high as it was, you know, 15, 20 years ago. Um, Elias is another one who I was really surprised they let go because I thought Elias was over as all hell. Like his whole WWE thing or WWE stands for walk with Elias and playing the guitar and the the stuff that he did where he was playing his uh his twin brother zeke yeah i mean that that was comedy gold man that was so good <laughs> people, so, some people thought it was so stupid but it was so damn funny man and he did it really really well so sad to see him go but i think i think we're gonna see him end up uh probably in nwa um honestly because i saw uh ec3 who's the NWA champion was already calling him out and being that Elias is, he's a legit musician. Billy Corgan owns NWA, Billy Corgan of the smashing pumpkins. So I could, oh. I could see him being drawn to Elias wanting to bring him in. Oh snap. Now is that, is any of that NWA stuff televised? Like where can people watch that? Uh, I, I normally catch like the, the clips and stuff on YouTube. I don't okay. know like where, where it comes on television wise. But I do think they I think they do have a TV deal. I'm just not sure what channel it comes on. Yeah, we were talking a little bit before we got on here, and it was uh we said, or you said, uh a lot of these people have been off TV besides like Mustafa Ali and mm -hmm. um I think Madcap Moss have been in and out a little bit over the past few months. Um, uh Dana Brooke. Dana Brooke just got uh she got pushed to NXT and because they weren't doing anything with her. She got pushed to NXT, and you saw her probably more times in the past month than you have in like the past like year and a half, two years. Really, I don't think I'm seeing this whole list. All I'm seeing is like nine. Oh, there we go. Yeah. So uh, the list I'm looking at it's uh, Mustafa Ali, Emma, Elias, Top Dollar, Rick Boogs, Riddick Moss, Aaliyah, Shelton Benjamin, Dolph Ziggler. Mace or Masse, Mansoor, Dana Brooke, Commander Aziz, who's also like he's an NXT now as a uh, Daba Kato, um, Shanky, and that that Shanky, that's a guy we haven't seen in probably a year now. He was with uh he was actually teaming with um Jinder Mahal for a while, but Jinder Mahal got drafted to Raw with uh the other two guys. I can't remember their names off the top of my head. Um, but yeah, he's gone. Uh Quincy Miller. He was uh, another guy from NXT. You didn't really see much of him. Uh, 
I, I think he got in some trouble. I, I think he got in some, some backstage trouble and that's why you didn't really see much of him, but he's gone. Um, Bryson Montana. That's another guy who was like new to NXT. I don't, I don't quite know if he got me, if they called him up to TV yet. Um, and there, there was another girl that got released who, who didn't even, I don't think she made it out of like the developmental part of <laughs> NXT. Um, so yeah, yeah. You know, like that's, that sucks, man. You know, like a lot of people lost their jobs, but I think a lot of these guys are going to bounce back. Dana Brooke, I, I would almost guarantee you she's going to end up in AEW. I think she's probably like a good fit for AEW. And I think they probably have a good spot for her there. Um, Emma, I could see her going to AEW also because she's she's actually she, she's a pretty decent wrestler. And her and uh, Riddick Moss are like together in real life, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, that's his piece. So maybe uh, they'll go there together or something. Mm -hmm. Man, yeah, that sucks that they all got let go. It's crazy that uh, everything is all well and good, and, and then the same week, oh, the week after the merger ha is finalized between WWE and uh, Endeavor, um, all this stuff comes down now. That sucks. Yeah. I, I, um, I think everybody knew. I, I think everybody knew it was coming. Also, you know, typically when you have mergers like this or like changes in leadership, you know, there's a lot of uh, you know grounds clean grounds cleaning going up. So it's um it's unfortunate, but I don't I don't think anybody was taken off guard by it. Yeah. Um. But we also heard earlier this week, maybe even a little bit into last week. Um, Jade Cargill is jumping from AEW to WWE. She's been in the performance center all week, I think. Supposedly, we none of this has been confirmed yet. So, um, yeah, the rumors are there. I don't think she's she's quite signed with them yet. I think it's more of like a uh, a touch and go type thing. So Tony Khan was they just had an interview with him on like Tuesday, I think it was, and somebody had asked him about that and his comment was she's always welcome back the door's always open for her etc cetera, etc cetera. um you know she left like if she if she did in fact really leave she left on good terms mm -hmm. so by tony khan saying that i think that she did leave aew whether she goes to wwe i i don't know because i would i would imagine with her getting to wwe and being at the performance center, let's say she was, and now today, like you see all the cuts that happen, you can't help but think, like, man, like, what if that's me? So, yeah, I'd I'd be interested to see what what uh what goes on with her. So I was kind of hoping that she goes to WWE, and I hope it works out for her because I think like she was good in AEW, but I think she needs that WWE polish. Oh, you know for sure, I mean? man. Yeah. I mean, she's got she's got the look, man. She looks like a freaking movie star. Yeah. Um, but her her in ring work just it needs work. Mm -hmm. And they don't have a performance center. They don't have like a training facility in AEW. So, you know, she did an interview way back when where um they were going over what they were gonna do in the match, and she was supposed to hit somebody with a chair. And she wasn't even sure, like, the proper way to hit somebody with a chair. Uh -huh. And somebody was just like, oh, yeah, like, you just do it like that, and, like, you're good to go. I mean, I'm sorry, man, but if you're going to hit somebody with a chair, like, to me, that's something that you have to train for. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you have to make sure, oh, okay, you know, like, I don't want to swing too high. I don't want to swing too low. Nothing like that. Because the other thing you have is the option of making it look super duper fake. So you could just kind of, like, tap them with the chair. Yeah. But you know, that's not going to do anything, but I just thought that was kind of crazy that they wanted her to do that chair spot so bad, even though she didn't know how to. And somebody was just like, Oh yeah, just, just pick it up and swing it. Oh, okay. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and we, we can get into what happened on a W last night, but one of my biggest gripes is to go along with what you're saying with a W is I feel like you're watching it while all these inexperienced indie wrestlers are getting experience. Like WWE, I feel like they 
their talent is so conditioned and so well trained and know what knows what to do because they have all the house shows that they do off TV. They have the performance center that all their talent goes through now. Um, so by the time you see them on TV, they've wrestled their opponent quite a few times already. They know each other. They know what to look for. They know each other's move sets and how to take them, take moves and everything. Um, with AEW, I feel like every week is just botch mania. Like it's just a botch. Fest. <laughs> it's like so cringy to watch sometimes it, like with the older experienced guys, like the Brian Danielsons, the former CM Punks, you know, they're not, they're, you know, professionals, they're good. But the younger talent that hasn't done this forever, like them, it's just hard to watch, man. <clears throat> yeah. I, uh, so listening to Busted Open for a while, I thought that I was in the, the minority when it came to this kind of stuff with pro wrestling. But I, I'm not really a fan of like the flippy shit. Um, mm-hmm. I, I, I think there's a time and a place for it, but it seems like every time somebody has a match, every, there always has to be like a, a Canadian destroyer, some type of like crazy flip dive, some kind of crazy senton or you know something. It's just always something, and to me, it's just you're you become so like unconditioned to that stuff. Because it's just like you see it all the time. So then when somebody does it, it's just not as big of a deal as if somebody did it for like the first time. Yeah. So uh, the example I want to use now is uh, at this past WrestleMania, they had a um, it was like a six way tag team match. And so Ricochet, we know Ricochet is a high flyer. He likes to do his flips and, you know, all kinds of crazy stuff. So there was a spot where all the guys were outside of the ring and Ricochet went up to the top turnbuckle and did a shooting star press to the outside on this group of guys. That's something he hasn't done on TV since he's been in WWE at all. And it was just crazy because everybody in that arena saw it for the first time too. And the reaction he got was just nuts. Even I jumped out of my seat. I was Holy shit. (laughs) That that's freaking amazing. But, Had he done that the day before on SmackDown or on Monday on Raw as well, in addition to like a couple of weeks prior, it wouldn't have been that big of a deal because it's just like, oh, okay, it's no different than like a clothesline or a hip toss or something at that point. Yeah. So, yeah. So listening to Busted Open, man, like that's that's really opened up my eyes for like, yeah, you know what I mean? Like professional wrestling should be like this. And I'm not and I'm not saying that, you know you shouldn't enjoy professional wrestling like that. It's an art form, man. You like what you like. But for me personally, I don't like the flippy stuff. I, I understand it's, it's a predetermined sport, but when I'm watching it, I want to be able to suspend my disbelief. That's, that's my goal. Every time I watch wrestling is can somebody make me feel like I'm watching an actual fight, like an actual struggle. And I, I just don't get that from AEW. Yep. Exactly. Um, another thing I've heard a few times is back in the day with WWE, uh, wrestlers, not just wrestlers that are in the same match together, but um, like say Stone Cold and The Rock are in the main event um, and Chris Jericho and Eddie Guerrero or something or uh, wrestling mid card or something, they would talk to like, stone cold and the rock and see what they're going to do in their match. So they don't duplicate it in theirs. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So you don't see the same stuff over and over. Whereas in AEW, I feel like somebody goes through a table in the opening match. Somebody goes through a table in the mid mid card match. Somebody goes through a table off the top of a ladder at the end of the <laughs> end of the show. Like it, it, it's the same thing that happens time and time again. And with and you add talent that's not uh very experienced with stuff like that and when i watch like when i used to watch it i used to like cringe at it man i swear i'm like one of these days i'm gonna watch somebody die on live television because these guys don't know what they're doing yeah yeah, if you uh like anybody on Twitter, they have a there's a Twitter account called AEW Botches 
And I mean, they have just dozens and dozens and dozens of clips of crazy shit, man. Um, there's there's one clip of a guy. Uh, I think it's actually uh, Alex Reynolds from The Dark Order. It was on uh, one of the dark shows and it was it was a tag team match. And some guy like two guys jumped off on opposite sides of the turnbuckle onto him so it's supposed mm-hmm. to be like a leg drop a leg drop splash combo and i don't know what happened but they ended up knocking him out and you could clearly see he's knocked out so when whenever you get knocked out like when your bell gets rung like that button gets pressed in your body you just go stiff mm-hmm. your, your your muscles tense up you just go stiff like you can't move and like you look you, you kind of look like you're getting shocked um and that's how he looked in the middle of the ring and the referee was just like oh okay cool like let's keep it going and that that's so 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 dangerous yeah i I watched that clip today because after the john moxley thing last night everybody was posting all kinds of stuff and i seen that and there was like it was the same referee in that match right and they they're just all running around they drag him over to the corner at one point and uh his uh, teammate tags him in but leaves him laying there in the ring the referee looks at him and then just goes right back to the action doesn't do anything it's like dude one of these people are gonna freaking die is that what it's gonna take for these people to like wake up and learn yeah yeah and it's just you know it, unfortunately it's inexperience and um you know mistakes happen man like everybody yeah. makes mistakes like we're all human but i think at some point I think Tony Khan needs to take a step back and go, you know what? I I probably need to do a little bit better job of like getting these, getting these guys trained. And now the thing that happened with uh, John Moxley, that wasn't, I, in my opinion, I don't think that was anybody's carelessness. I think that was just one of those things that, that just happened. Uh Um, You know what I mean? But I do think that the referee should have been more cognizant and been like, Oh, he's, this dude got his bell rung. Let's go ahead and just, you know, do a different finish and let it be yeah. because wor- worst case scenario. Um, and they spoke about this on busted open today. If you, you mess something up and the referee counts three, like there's another show they could always, Oh, you know, like we're, we're going to do a rematch because whatever they can yeah. give you any reason at all. So honestly, could have stopped the match. Oh, Ray Phoenix won the title, yada, yada. If that wasn't how it's supposed to be, okay, cool. Go backstage. They got a show on Saturday. They got another show next Wednesday. Set something up like, oh, hey, you know what? Like you took advantage of whatever. Yeah. Set the match up, have him win the belt back. And that's that. That's not something that people are going to talk about for a long time. You know what I mean? Like they're going to forget about it the next week. Because everybody's going to move on from it. So, yeah, unfortunately, what happened, like, it's just unfortunate what happened last night. But, you know, I just, I, I, I hope they do better. I do. Yeah. Um, that just sucks. And I seen Stevie Richard, Stevie Richards is on YouTube now. Have you seen that? I don't know if he, it's yeah. a new thing, but, um, he was talking about it today and he made a comparison of, Tony Khan and Vince McMahon where um, Undertaker got injured at a WrestleMania and Vince McMahon got in the ambulance with Undertaker and went left WrestleMania um, where while the show was still going on and went to the Undertaker uh, went to the hospital with the Undertaker where you see Tony Khan last night out dancing on stage with um, who was that I forget I forget his name. Daniel Garcia. Yeah, Daniel Daniel Garcia. Garcia. He's out there like doing doing his little uh, hip thrust and everything out there while John Moxley's probably laying up in a hospital somewhere. Yeah. So I I did see that video. Uh, For me, like personally, man, I I thought that was a little unfair because we don't know. It, that, it's not like that happened right after like the John Moxley match. It's not like that happened to John Moxley and Tony came out and like, was dancing or whatever. That happened at like the end of like the uh, whatever the the Saturday sh- or the Friday show is. What, what is it? Rampage is Rampage, it? Rampage, yeah. Um, yeah, so it was after those recordings. So 
you have all that time where Tony Khan could have been back there with him and hey man how's everything is everything all right because the other thing too is like you can't force somebody to go to a hospital hey man you know you, you need to go to a hospital you're not feeling good no nah, man I'm good no you're gonna get in there and go yeah. they can't force them to go um there's another there's another picture floating around too of somebody and they got they got a picture of uh uh what the hell's the the announcer that John Moxley's married to uh Renee Paquette. Her name. Yeah, Renee Paquette. So it was her, uh Claudio Castagnoli and Tony Khan and there was a uh and I think Wheeler Yuta. They were all standing outside of uh like the medical trailer where John Moxley was in obviously getting checked out. So okay. you know it's at, at some point Tony Tony Khan did go to check on him. So it's uh when you watch the video, it just makes it seem like, hey, Vince McMahon went to the hospital like right away with The Undertaker. Oh, look, as soon as that happened to John Moxley, Tony Khan came out and danced. And, yeah. you know, there there were several hours between him him getting hurt and Tony Khan coming out and doing that. So to me, I thought it was a little unfair because it didn't tell it didn't tell the whole story. That's true. That's very true. I didn't think about that. Um. It's funny how things make their way onto onto the internet and people build their own stories uh, with like half the facts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. One of the things I think is crazy is that like the amount of people who are not in the professional wrestling business, who aren't professional wrestlers, who probably don't have an athletic bone in their body, um, calling for the referee to get fired from the match last night. Mm -hmm. So I'm just like, like what, like what, why, why would they fire him? Because he made yeah. a mistake. Like, can you imagine if, you know, yeah, he made a mistake. Damn. Can you imagine if you made one mistake at work yeah. and Hey man, we, we got to let you go. Sorry. We, you know, I, I could understand if it's like a huge mistake, but I would almost guarantee you that John Moxley wasn't pissed about anything. I guarantee you he wasn't like, oh, why you, you know, yeah. why didn't you stop the match? I, I I would almost I would bet dollars to donuts. That's a conversation that did not happen. Yeah. Um and it's just it it just gets chalked up to one of those things. But I um like people are out with their pitchforks, man. They they want to see this guy get fired and all this well, other stuff. And Tony Khan needs to take action. And I think I think they're not just last night, but it was the same referee that we talked about earlier that um, that dude was laying on the mat where the two dudes jumped off each uh, corner mm -hmm. of the ring, knocked him out, and he was laying there. It was the same referee that did nothing then, too. Yeah. So, so I understand like I last night, my last night might have been, you know, a one off, but that previous incident seemed like 10 times worse. Yeah. So I would, I would think that he would get like a talking to, I don't think he needs to get fired. I think he needs to be properly trained and there needs to be something that goes on in the back. And they say, Hey, listen, if anytime you see somebody and it looks like they're out, we're just going to change the finish of the match, regardless of what it is. And mm -hmm. that's going to be that. So like I said, I, I think it's just more training on his part. So if we have dynamite next week, and something similar happens, then I think at that point it might be like, okay, this guy really isn't that good of a referee. Maybe it's time to to go ahead and replace him. But again, it's not for Twitter to decide. That's going to be for Tony Khan because that is his company. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So, does your opinion change at all if John Moxley is paralyzed and or dead right now? or the other dude um no no because so and you know other wrestlers have come out and they, they've said this before like many times like you know what you're signing up for like you yeah. know what you're getting into and like shit happens all the time let's let, let's look at Big E for instance he was uh him and uh rich holland were outside doing some stuff and rich holland went to do a belly to belly suplex and for whatever reason you know, I don't know if Big E landed wrong or he didn't fully toss him, whatever happened, but Big E's neck got broken. And when that happened, like Twitter, oh, we got to fire Rich Holland. He's unsafe, blah, 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 mm -hmm. blah, blah. 
stuff happens. Big E even came out and said, Hey man, my neck's broken, but it's not his fault. You know what I mean? Like we sign up for this stuff. Shit happens. Yeah. And if John Moxley were to get par- like paralyzed or something like that would be a, a shit happens kind of thing. Um, to me, it's no different than like when he cuts his head open, like he's always constantly hit- cutting his head open. What's to, what's to say one day that, you know, he, he doesn't have like any staff or something on his hand that gets on the blade that he's using. And when he cuts his head open, he gets a staff infection, yeah. gets MRSA and ends up and ends up dying. Like, I mean, you, you like you literally can't blame anybody. You can't. Oh, Tony Khan made you do this. No, he he did that himself. But again, that's one of those things where it's like, shit happens. Yeah, you know, just gotta minimize the risk as much as possible. But the risk is always there. So now, if what happened last night happened, and John Moxie was clearly like, "Hey, man, like." stop this match i can't go on or whatever and the referee was like nah man like you need to keep going because we got to <laughs> get this finish in and and then john moxley like got paralyzed because he took another move then one million percent that referee is that, dude. one one thousand percent the blame yeah i don't care if you can't walk stand up and do it <laughs> yeah <laughs> you still gotta go to the top rope yeah <laughs> you still gotta hit that frog splash. Dang, man. I I hope AEW gets better, man. I hope they figure out a way also going back to the younger talent. Um I hope I hope they figure out a way to like get those men and women trained up off camera. So, you know, like uh just to minimize the risk of their inexperience, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So I know that like, there's a couple of wrestlers there who have their own schools. So I know, um, so Cody Rhodes, he's got the Nightmare Factory, and um, QT Marshall and like his guys and stuff. Like they're always they they're out of that school. So I know QT Marshall's like a trainer. So my guess is that he probably offers people stuff. Like, hey, listen, Saturday, like we're not doing shit. Why don't you come down? Like, open mat. We'll go over some stuff. But I I think with the uh, the newer generation and like the younger people, because I knew I was like this when I was younger. Also, like you think, you know, everything Um, there's, you know, your elders can't tell you shit because you already know everything. Like, you know, more than they could ever, but you never take into account like their life experiences or any of this other stuff. So I kind of feel like there's, there's situations where there's some of the older talent, like a QT Marshall, Dustin Rhodes, um, probably Billy Gunn. These guys all have facilities where you could work, you could train, you could get better. But a lot of the younger guys don't want to do that because they want to go to the gym or they they want to go to the beach to post on social media or like yeah. whatever else. So then, hey, you get to TV and then like your match sucks because like you don't know what the hell you're doing. Like you look like shit in there. You know what I mean? So it's just that's, that's that's when Tony needs to step in and say, "Listen, you ain't going on TV, motherfucker. You suck." Yeah. <laughs> and I I feel like he's done that quite a bit. So you, you know you're starting to see a lot of uh, releases from AEW. Yeah. But the diff so the difference between Tony Khan and what they do in WWE is Tony Khan doesn't say shit to him. He's just like, "Oh, I I see their their contract is coming up. I'm just not going to say anything and let that contract run out." but I'm not going to put them on TV or do anything else. So when the pandemic started, he started assembling a huge roster, just signing all these people that just got released, all this other stuff. You only have so much TV time. man. So yeah. now you have a huge roster. Like I would say probably three fourths of the roster is like super green. They really don't, they don't have like that TV exposure. They don't know like which cameras to look at, like all that other stuff. So of course, when you're you're not used to that, you're going out there, you're nervous, you're going to make mistakes, you're not going to look good. So, all right, well, this person doesn't look good. I guess let me just sit them on the sidelines and wait for that contract to come up. If that's what's happening and he's not speaking to these people, that's really shitty because, hey, man, I want to have you on TV, but you look like shit, you know, like 
let's start training to, to, to build you up and all this other stuff. You get in there, you do the work and that's it. Um, then you get that TV time. But I just, I think a lot of the younger guys aren't doing that because, Hey, they, they know it all already, or they have friends at high places and I think they're all right. Yeah. Or their, uh, yeah, their friends are EVPs. Yeah. <laughs> um, you see, uh, WWE SmackDown is going to USA next year. Yeah. Yeah. That's, um, big news, man. Yeah. And what kind of shocked me there too was, yeah, SmackDown's going to, uh, USA, but raw and nxt might be leaving usa oh no they're they're leaving usa for sure oh yeah for sure yeah yep yep Man. and there's no word where they're going Mm-mm. I, so from from what i read i've heard disney might be interested uh which i i just i can't see how i i can't see how disney would want to host wwe and if they yeah. did i probably wouldn't be able to watch raw or nxt again because it's going to be so watered down and yeah like it's it's, it's gonna it's not even gonna be the pg era it's gonna be the g era yeah um and i, I just <laughs> I, I i don't think that's a good look there but then i also heard um and nbc picking up raw and nxt and then um having uh amazon so they would have uh they would stream on uh they would, amazon would stream raw and then nxt i heard amazon might be the front runner to get raw and nxt but i believe nbc owns uh usa mm-hmm. so bringing smackdown to usa part of that deal was for wwe to have like four four or five uh primetime events on nbc itself throughout the year okay that's what i heard at least and this will be the yeah. first time uh wwe has a primetime spot on nbc apparently yeah so i'm i'm pretty excited about that i mean i hope i really 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 hope smackdown stays on fridays because I, I I just I love having that SmackDown on Fridays, man. It's just yeah. it's nice to get off work. You know, usually Fridays, me and the wife we get a pizza and uh, you know enjoy some pizza, get ready for the weekend, and watch some SmackDown on Friday night. So I hope it stays on Fridays. Um, I'll be interested to see like where Raw and NXT end up. So hopefully, you know, the quality of the wrestling program is still as good. Um the premium events like on the SmackDown side, I'm excited about that because uh, I used to like uh Saturday night's main event back in the day and uh primetime wrestling. That was always yeah. fun. So like that, that, that would come on Saturdays. Um So seeing that, and I remember back when WCW was around, they used to do a lot of a uh, clash of champions on Saturdays. Also, it would come on at six Oh five PM on TBS. So I, I've always enjoyed Saturday wrestling shows. So I hope when they do those those like primetime events or those premium events, it has like that same feel to like Saturday night's main event or like that primetime wrestling. Yeah. Sat- Saturday is, I mean, I, uh, Friday is the best for SmackDown. I agree with you on that. And Saturday is the best day to have any, whether it be just live events like we're talking about or uh like uh ple's uh premier uh what is it what is ple premium have? live event that's right premium, live, premium event. live events yep um all those pay-per-views and everything ain't there ain't nothing worse than having uh wrestlemania on a sunday i know wrestlemania is two nights now but wrestlemania on a sunday and having to stay up till like almost midnight knowing you have to go to work the next day to yeah just to watch the end of wrestlemania yeah, the the pay per views, in my opinion, man, they just they hit different on a Saturday. They really do. Yeah, um, I just I enjoy them so much more on Saturdays. Heck yeah, it's just that feeling. You don't got to go to work the next day. You can stay up late. You could uh, pig out and eat a bunch of snacks. It's great, man. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, 
Um, we had some Xbox news come out this week too. Yeah, yeah, we got we saw the uh, the FTC leaks. Yeah, more were, uh, leaks, they, and they 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 were leaked by Microsoft themselves. Like, how, how do you leak your own shit? Like, so from what <laughs> no. I what I understand, there were supposed to be redacted documents, but whoever redacted them didn't redact them properly, and <clears throat> like all the black marks that you normally see on uh, information that's been redacted in documents mm-hmm. was able to be removed, so they could see everything. Um, I think, like for work, I use a lot of Bluebeam. Um, it's a PDF editor and viewer and stuff. And when you create a PDF and you mark it up with your markups, there's an option in there to flatten it, which makes everything that you marked up on that sheet part of that sheet. Like it can't be moved. It's on there. On there. And there's another option once you flatten it to um, allow unflattening. So if you check that box that says allow unflattening, that means once you save it as a flattened document, nothing can be moved ever. It's like permanent, all your changes you made. I'm thinking at some point, somebody in Microsoft, they might have flattened that document, but it was never, uh, that little checkbox was not checked for allow unflatten. So whoever downloaded that document and got on their computer, they were able to unflatten it and move all those black marks. I think that's might've, might've been what happened. So back in the day, I used to be a paralegal and, uh, we, we used to have to do a lot of redaction and back then, uh, they didn't have the software like they have now. So in order to do like the proper redaction, you would take a document and you would make a copy of it and you would get the copy, the physical copy of it. And you would get like white out tape, not like the liquid white out, but it's like this little like mechanism where you, uh, it's got, it's called white out tape and it's just like a strip of white. So you would redact whatever you needed with that white tape. Then you would scan that document in. And then once it was uploaded, you could then edit the, the PDF with like whatever else. And then you could put the black bar over it. So, you know, that way, that was like the old school way, but there was never, ever, ever, ever a time where you would know what was under that redacted info because mm-hmm. it was physically redacted. So yeah. it's, it's, it's too bad that we've gotten away from practices like that. And I mean, I, I get it, man. Listen, like that's, that's archaic, but to me, it's tried and true. So maybe going forward, they could uh, practice a little bit of that because I just, I kind of feel like these, you know, like with software coming out, man, I always feel like people like there's, somebody always has like a counter software to your software. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so somebody can get a document and, you know, I see a lot of people that like post stuff online and like they blur out like their feed or, you know, like whatever, like they have, they have software out there that removes all of that stuff. And yeah. that picture's still like on like the internet forever, so that's unfortunate if that's really what happened with Microsoft. But you know, oops. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, like for every piece of software they create that say it's unhackable, there's ten people out there trying to hack it, and at some point it's going to happen. Yeah, definitely. Um, but yeah, we saw. Uh, we got some news on uh, Elder Scrolls Six. It's mm-hmm. going to be an Xbox exclusive, which we, you know, I, I think that's what everybody was figuring, especially yeah. considering that Starfield is an Xbox exclusive. Um, we got news on the the new model of the Series X. So this is going to act as like the uh, the slim model of the Series X, and they got rid of the drive. God, drive, man. it's all Damn digital. It. No more of that. Damn it, nah, man. You you got that physical media that you spent money on. Guess what? You want this system? You can't use it. Guess what? Um, yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> that, that's where I'm at. Um, they leaked uh the next Xbox console, so the successor to the Series S and the Series X. 
And this one is going to be a digital console also. So it's going to be a hybrid cloud-based digital console, which blows because I mean, that means that the next generation is probably just going to be straight digital cloud-based mm-hmm. or whatever. I, I think that's going to be the, the new norm going into stuff. So I was actually talking with a buddy of mine and he's, I, I'm pretty much in the same camp also, man. He, he's really thinking that this is the last generation that he's going to be buying a console. Yeah. Cause he's not, he's not with the digital stuff. Um, I don't mind the digital stuff too much. I don't, I don't want to mess around with anything cloud-based. Um, yeah. I don't want to have to have like that hybrid or whatever. Cause it's just like, I feel like you're going to have to have just a solid internet connection constantly. Um, unless they have an option where you could like download from the cloud onto like your local system memory and play a game that way. I, I, I just don't know, but I, uh, yeah, not, not really thrilled with the, the future of the Xbox. No, man. I, uh, thinking about the all digital future that we're inevitably going to like, Okay, so, like, I'm not going to make a statement as big as I'm not going to buy those next generation consoles because, uh, like you said, I'm not that, you know, I'll take physical over digital any day, but if digital is my only option to play some games that I find interesting and I like, then fine, whatever. Um, But I feel like if they're going to all digital future, then every game that they create from that moment on from uh i don't know when they said it was gonna come out like 2028 or something from 2028 through the end of time all those digital games that i purchase myself should be work on the next generation console that they make like because that's the only like it should carry over my account should be linked to that game says that i bought it and then 30 years from now, if I want to download it and play it on my Xbox series, 480,000 or whatever, um, <laughs> then I should be able to download that game that came out 30 years ago and play it just as well as it played when I first bought it then. Um, yeah, I, I, I agree with that. 100,000% man. I really do. What um, the only thing I could kind of see them doing that I would be like, kind of okay with is if they released a, uh, like a, a detachable drive so that you could play your physical games. So let's say like on the next Xbox, it's like straight up digital, but you could buy a, a disc reader add on for, I don't know, 200 bucks. And with that, you could play all your physical games from the original Xbox, the Xbox 360, the Xbox one and so on, so on. Yeah. I would be good with something like that. That'd be good too. I I hope that's something they're looking into or they're thinking about. Um, but what's really worrying me about this all digital future and cloud gaming and everything. So they say, yeah, the next console is going to be all digital. We're going all digital, uh, online storefront type thing, and then cloud streaming as well. So you need Game Pass. Get this cloud streaming. You can play whatever games on Game Pass. All that. That's all well and good. But then what happens the next generation? I think at some point there will be, it'll be all subscription based. The consoles will get smaller and smaller as internet gets better and better. Um, They're going to want to save money by not putting any uh, storage, putting smaller storage on your little uh, game console you buy. I think in the future, we'll, we're just going to get a little box like this big that we plug in our TV and every single game is going to be cloud streaming. So you just pay for the service at that time is probably going to be like $85 a month, maybe more. And you just play the games that they have listed on their service. You just stream them. You, so you don't download anything. You just stream it. And then once you stop paying for that service, then you have nothing anymore. You just have little paperweight that sits on your uh mantle and you don't do anything with it yeah yep i i I definitely see that happening (laughs) so the the other thing too is like a lot of these uh these consoles so for instance like the ps5 it's got the uh 
it's got the onboard SSD, right? So it's soldered onto the motherboard. Now, the thing with that is, um, and I think a lot of people are misunderstanding of the concept of an SSD. So these things can break. These things can damage after time. So everything is finite. Mm -hmm. The only difference is, is that you probably have more reads and writes on an SSD than you would on a hard drive that has an actual spindle. So we're talking upwards of maybe 80,000 saves that you could, I'm sorry, 80,000 read and writes that that SSD can handle before it gets to, before it doesn't work anymore. So the likelihood of somebody going through that is pretty low. But if you extend that with time, let's just say like you game a lot, right? A lot of digital stuff. You just go, you start downloading. Oh, I played this, done with it, erased. All right, done with this, downloaded, erased. The other thing too is what you have to remember is your game saves are also going on that SSD also. So that's going to count as read and write functions. So every time you save your game, every time you delete a save, et cetera, et cetera, um, eventually like these things are going to break. And then are we at a point now where if it breaks, hey, guess what? You just need to go buy a new console. Like my mm -hmm. PS4, my PS3, the hard drives die on them. Okay, cool. I can just go to Amazon, Best Buy, whatever, buy a new hard drive, throw the OS, uh, throw the OS on there pop it back in, download whatever, and I'm good to go. Yeah. So I, I'm i also curious if consoles are going to be like that going forward, where you're not going to be able to touch that that memory yourself. You know, even now, like I know like the Xbox is like that. Like you, like you physically have to, you have to buy like that proprietary memory card or yeah. whatever for, our, for the Series S and the Series X. Um, and this is where I think the PlayStation is better because you could you could buy your own SSD, pop it in there, and you just gave yourself some more storage. And now with the uh, the the latest update for the PS5, you could actually hold up to uh, an eight terabyte SSD. You could pop Ooh. in there, so that's going to get you a ton of storage. But you're, you're yeah. also going to drop like like seven hundred bucks on one of those eight terabyte SSDs. Yeah. So if if you got cash like that, go for it. Dang, eight terabytes, man. You put like three Call of Duties on there. Yeah. <laughs> Dang, man. Yeah. It... Speaking of Call of Duty, man, did you see uh, uh, Warzone, like the first Warzone is getting shut down today? No, I didn't see that. I haven't. Yeah. I, I've been so out of Call of Duty the past like year. It's not even funny. Dude, I... uh. So I, I installed the 360 versions of Call of Duty 4, Modern Warfare 2, Modern Warfare 3, Black Ops, Black Ops 2. I did all those on the Series X, and the lobbies are still full. Well, not mm -hmm. full, not like it was back in the day. But playing Call of Duty 4, Modern Warfare, the original one, on the 360, man, so much fun. I, I'll die on this hill, man. Those Call of Duties that came out during that era were the best. Yeah, I agree. They were the freaking best, man. Right before the massive wave of uh, microtransactions hit the whole Call of Duty uh, series, that was the best, man. Yeah, it like for me, it kind of fell downhill with uh, Advanced Warfare. Yeah, I did. Oh yeah, I so I I I, I was never really big into like the futuristic stuff, and then they came out with the. Uh, what was the one where they're like in space? Uh, uh, was that that was that infinite, infinite warfare? warfare? Yep, infinite warfare. Yeah, then there was that one, and that was just like, what in the world? That was a wow. And then, um, so Black Ops Three, it's like it I, to me. I think Black Ops Three was kind of like in a weird, kind of like a hybrid, like futuristic, not futuristic. I didn't really care for Black Ops Three that much. I didn't hate it, but it wasn't it wasn't my favorite. And then they came out with Black Ops Four which was just like that straight, like, uh, that, uh, what is it? Like that battle Royale style. Yep. And that then, was, a, like, that was on, the they, first battle Royale, I think. And then like later on, they released a, uh, like an update with like a campaign or something on there. And I was just like, man, what, what is this trash? And then, <laughs> uh, Warzone came out because Warzone came out with like the call of duty remake. So 
that call or I'm sorry, the modern warfare remake. So that modern warfare remake, that was actually pretty good. I did like that campaign. The multiplayer, I didn't care for it though, because like there was like three maps you could play on. And then if you wanted to play on more maps, you had to, you had to fork out some more cash. Of course. But then that's when, that's when Warzone dropped. And that's for me, like that just pretty much killed call of duty for me. Cause I just wasn't into it at all. And they're shutting it down, huh? Yeah. So I, I, I had no idea that there was a, a second war zone. I just assumed war zone was war zone, but like, I, I didn't so realize too. that there was a one and a two, but apparently no, there's a, uh, there's a war zone one, which is like the OG that's getting shut down today. And now like what they have, currently is war zone two yeah i so. thought it was the same war zone that just evolved over every release I, the same same thing i thought it was just like season pass updates or like whatever the hell i didn't realize that there was like literally a war zone one and then a war zone two but i mean either way i don't i don't give a shit i mean i'm not into it you know i'm sorry for anybody who's really into the first war zone that it's getting shut down but yeah you know their player base can't be that big if they're shutting it down on the first one or maybe it is and they're just that stupid i don't know so i I was reading on twitter and somebody posted uh it said imagine playing Fortnite since the day it came out like all the microtransactions like all the skins Hmm. all like the the stuff you bought and then all of a sudden epic game comes out and says hey we're shutting down Fortnite, but don't worry Fortnite 2 is going to be here pretty soon yeah. And you lose everything. Yeah. That's that's literally what's happening with Warzone 1. And I was like, oh, damn, well, that's shit. So I guess, like, the stuff isn't carrying over to to the next Warzone or... I, I don't know, man, but I'm just like, I'm glad I'm not in that, in that field because, like, I don't give a shit about Call of Duty and I don't want to give a shit about Call of Duty, but I just thought it was interesting to see that tidbit happening. Yeah, that's interesting for sure. Ah, <sighs> daily dropping knowledge, Call of Duty knowledge. Um, dude, we we need to run uh, we need to run like Black Ops Two or something, man, on the Xbox. I know, it, man. Dude, I was having so much freaking fun, but now like I'm I'm on my uh my cyberpunk shit, so now um you know, maybe here and there I'll throw in a COD four. Yeah, hit hit me up next time you throw in Black Ops 2 or something, and maybe I'll jump on with you. It's just, I don't know what's been up the past, like, two weeks or so. I I just haven't really been feeling gaming, really. Like, I still got Starfield. I haven't even progressed any further in since we last talked. I want to get into that uh, Cyberpunk, but uh, if I do, I don't know, maybe. That's a crapshoot. But we'll see. I don't know. I'm in a gaming gaming uh, rut. lull, I guess. Yeah, rut. Yeah, that that happens to me all the time, man. I was actually just getting out of that. I'm actually just getting out of one. Uh, so the problem with me, man, is like I just I have so much stuff to play that I don't know what to play. So mm-hmm. I end up replaying something that I've already played again, and that's that's the problem I have. So like realistically, I could probably get rid of all my stuff and keep maybe like 40 games, and just replay those for the rest of my life and be okay but yeah i i try to do different things so like i have uh left for dead 2 i've had that forever so i actually popped that in the series x to see how it runs and like it looks good and stuff but i i found the game to be boring as hell really like <laughs> yeah i i just did not get into it at all i played for maybe about 30 minutes and i was just like uh okay like just running around shooting picking stuff up yeah shooting so i picked up the, there's a chainsaw that i picked up and i really like that but it has fuel i'm like what well, that's lame i don't want to have to refuel that especially since you're like you have pistols that have infinite ammo like, yeah i'll just run with those pistols i understand that you need stronger weapons and stuff eventually but yeah i just couldn't get into that one man um what's another one that i had popped in just to kind of check out um Red Dead Redemption. So I I had that I have that on the 360. So mm-hmm. I put that on the Series X, and that's uh that's upgraded, man. So it's got like updated visuals, and I think it's got a, f- a higher frame rate. So that's another game that I want to replay because it looks it looks sexy as hell in the Series X, man. 
Yeah, last weekend, me and my wife went to a retro game toy movie shop um, by us, the new one that just opened up, and mm-hmm. I actually got Red Dead Redemption on 360. Yeah. Um, and I also got uh, Guitar Hero 3 on 360 as well. And I really want to play, get back into Guitar Hero, so I uh, popped the disc into my Xbox One X, <clears throat> And I realized the Guitar Hero games aren't backwards compatible. So I'm like, oh, okay, that's cool. Whatever. I'll just hook up my 360. I plugged all the wires in. I turned it on. It turned on fine. The dashboard came up. I opened the disc tray, put the disc in, close it, and it doesn't read discs. Uh, so so uh, I can't play my Guitar Hero games right now. I got to get a new 360 or something. Yeah. Um, so that sucks. And... Now with that, those leaks of the uh, the next gen Xbox is going to be completely digital. Even the mid gen uh, mid generation refresh, I'm going to end up pulling the trigger on a Series X here in the next. Couple yeah, months, man. I think. Yeah, dude. I think if they uh, if the, that Ant Online eBay store still has that that bundle, I mean, ninety bucks off retail, man. I I think that's probably as good as you're going to get with that. Yeah, unless of course they they drop something on Black Friday where you know they have like two controllers and a year Game Pass and five physical games or something for four ninety nine, then that's obviously yeah. going to be a better deal. But yeah, it's it's a shame, man, because it's like I got it that's sitting there. It's pretty cool, but I don't know, man. I'm into I'm into the cyberpunk right now. So, and you gotta wonder uh, with these three sixty games. Um, and the OG Xbox and all that, and the Xbox One, the games you put in the Series X only act as a uh, like a license to play the game. It still triggers a download of the game that you got to play. Um, Correct. So if they shut down the storefront or something on the Series X at some point, or any ne- any future generation of console they make, you got to wonder like, will those physical games still even work in it? Yeah. Yep. So one one of the things I always do, and I don't know if this makes a difference or not, but usually I I tend to buy a lot of used games um, only if like they're like in good condition and stuff. So if I buy a used game, I install it immediately on whatever console I'm using it on. That way I could download whatever updates, any patches, whatever, and it's downloaded. I have nothing to worry about. The problem is a lot of the the stuff that I have that's factory sealed, if there's updates or anything on there, I'm not going to open that up to install that to make sure I got an update to go ahead and play that later on because Mm -hmm. there's a good chance that I'm going to sell that factory sealed eventually. Um, But that's just one of the things that I do. And I know a lot of people, they, they do the same thing. As soon as they get a game, they open it up and they install like whatever patches, whatever else that's in there. Not saying that these things are going to get shut down immediately, but I typically like to do that. That way I don't have to worry about it later on down the road. Yeah. Uh, uh, putting your whole library on there, that's got to take up some space, huh? Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Like I've got, uh, so my PS3, man, I've got a, one well, one of my, like, so I have several PS3s. I have one that's jailbroken that I have like a whole bunch of stuff on there. But my like non my God of War non jailbroken one, I've got a one terabyte SSD in there, and I've got maybe about fifteen gigs left because I downloaded all all my so all my physical games. Um, what's good about the PS3 is that that's still the era where you don't have to copy the whole game onto the hard drive. It's only patches, game data, game saves. So all that data that you have, it's still all that game data is still on your disc. So with the pay, with the PS4 and the Xbox One, that's when we got into the era where it didn't matter. Like you had that disc and it automatically like ripped all those contents onto your hard drive. So mm-hmm. essentially your disc was just acting like a key. The, yeah. the, the three the 360 and the PS3 aren't like that. Um but between like all the digital games that I have for the PlayStation 3 and like the updates and patches and stuff takes up a lot of space man a lot a lot of freaking space that's the only thing there is like if you if you got the hard drive space for it great but if you don't you're sol yeah yeah sucks 
Um, but all right, old school. That's that's about our time there, man. Yeah, man. We went over an hour. Yeah, Didn't even funny. feel like it, man. Yeah, right. Um, all that all that wrestling talk. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, as of this week, we're on Spotify, Apple, Google Podcasts, and iHeartRadio. So if you're watching on man. YouTube, uh, go over there, check us out, rate us, subscribe to us, listen to us on there, listen to us five, six times in a row if you want. I won't complain. Um, <laughs> subscribe to us here on YouTube. It's youtube.com slash at the mighty buildo or youtube.com slash at old school legend gaming. Uh, try to make sure I put links in the description for all that. Um, I appreciate everybody listening, talking, uh, listen to us talk for an hour and I appreciate you old school for hanging out with me again. We'll see y'all next week. See ya. Peace.